So today I'm going to do a different video. I'm actually going to replicate someone else's artwork. Um, today it's Roald Dahl Day, um, or as the name is supposed to be pronounced, is Rule Dahl, um, apparently. But um, yeah, I don't usually mimic or try and copy anybody's work, but as it's uh, Roald Dahl Day, I thought I would give it a go. Now, Roald Dahl is obviously a very well-known children's book author, um, wrote some classics such as the BFG, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, those kinds of things. Um, and most of them, certainly in the more modern times, were illustrated, or art illustrated, um, by Quentin Blake, who you're probably familiar with um, by name, but if not, you'll certainly recognise a lot of his work. Uh, it's got a very child-friendly style of artwork, which um, is in a lot of books, not just um, Roald Dahl books, but a lot of books for children, um, and a few that are, you know, not so much for children as well. Some of his artwork that uh, that you do see, but most of us will be familiar with it. Certainly, we've got children or all just growing up um, reading these sorts of books, and I've got a couple of examples here of uh, some of uh, Quentin Blake's work. This is the BFG, of course, and as you can see, it's quite a it's a, it's a simplistic style, although it's not simple to um, to actually do. It looks like it's you know perhaps done um, quickly and uh, and easily, but to actually replicate it, it's actually quite difficult. I, I find I find copying something that's more simplistic in nature um, more difficult than than making something look realistic in many ways. I, a lot of people probably don't quite understand that, but to deliberately make something look simplistic um, and just sort of get those wavy lines that are naturally come to this particular illustrator is quite difficult to to mimic so it's going to be quite a, quite a challenge my my early style was more i suppose sort of towards this kind of thing um but i, I changed over the years and uh, it's it not so much now there's elements of it that are similar but um but the you know they uh it's not as easy as it looks anyway. Um, this is another one of the more well-known um, pieces um, by Quentin Blake, which is Fantastic Mr. Fox. I think that was one of my favourites when I was growing up. And again, one of the more well-known um, pieces is this one, uh, Matilda. And uh, again, illustrated by Quentin Blake. He wasn't the only illustrator to illustrate some of these works, um, but by far the most popular and, uh, and widely known. Um, this one here is the picture that I'm going to try and copy, um, or at least um, take some elements from. So this is going to be a long video in a sense, so I will speed up the first elements. Now, Quentin Blake tends to just use uh, a dip pen and put his art straight on the, on the paper, from what I understand. As it's not a style that I'm used to, I am going to draw out the lines, first of all, in pencil, just as a guide, and then go over them with ink. Now, I've kind of replicated a lot of the, the same products that um, Quentin Blake uses. Um, obviously, a, a pencil, I don't really count. That's just a, a standard thing. Um, but he does use dip pens, and he also uses uses antique nibs for a lot of his work, which is actually what this is. This isn't something that's produced anymore. Um, the actual holder is different, but the, the actual nib uh, is a, I don't know how old, but I would say uh, probably about 70, 60, 70 years old, this particular nib. Um, they don't last that long. Um, they are the sort of thing you throw away once you're done with them, but I don't tend to use them that often. Although I have actually got a stockpile of them because, as I say, they stopped making them a long time ago. So I've got lots of uh, little vintage boxes of them dotted around for when I do need them. So I'm going to use the dip pen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Obviously just a, a standard eraser. The couple of things that are going to be different to what Quentin uses are the paper, choice of paper. I do use the same paper as, as, as Quentin a lot of the time, um, not for any reason other than just by chance because it's um, good stuff, um, but I'm just going to use a low cost cartridge paper. And one of the reasons being is that the nib of the pen um, will slide over this much better than it will a watercolour paper which has generally, if it's a cold pressed paper, has quite a lot of texture on the surface which makes the uh, 
Lion's Extra Wavy, which you'll see in his work, and it also pings lots of ink about if you're not careful as well. So I've decided to go for a, a simple paper, um, only because it, to be perfectly honest, because it fits under the camera. The other sheets that I've got are, are actually bigger than the, the desk that I'm sitting at at the moment. So that's the reason I'm using that. Um, I do have the type of ink that is used in his artwork as well, but I'm going to use a different ink purely because the ink that he uses doesn't work particularly well with this paper. So I'm going to use my own choice of ink. Um, I've got several in the background that you can't see. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to go for yet, but the inks that I've chosen work well with this paper. The ink that Quentin Blake uses tends to seep into this style of paper a little bit too much so the lines become very soft and blurry which I don't particularly want so that's the reason I'm going to do that and I'll probably I'll probably just use a, a standard uh, black Indian ink such as this one so that's probably what I'm going to go for today um, so the first part of the video is going to be just the, the, the pencil lines and that kind of thing it's going to look very rough it's supposed to I'm just using it as a guide. When I go over and put the ink on, I'm not going to go over it precisely because um, I want it to have that sort of rustic nature and appearance. So the first part of the video, I am going to speed through just because it's going to take me a little while to get it right. In the background, as always, you'll probably hear my pugs snoring in case you wonder what those strange noises are. And um, yeah, that's it really. I'm going to begin doing that now and um, we'll speed up from now. Okay, so I've sketched out a very basic um, drawing. I'm not trying to match it 100%. I haven't really got time to do that, to be honest. Um, but I'm just trying to get that, that feel for, for the work um, that, uh, that Quentin's done. So I'm going to start inking the piece now. And um, I'm going to leave it quite rough. I might try and leave it slightly more rough and rustic than even Quentin has on the original one, certainly with the books, because um, I haven't got time to... Uh, spend a long long time working on uh, making sure they're all correctly positioned and, and whatnot to match the original so it's just to sort of give it a sort of a hint of, of his work really so i'm going to start doing the um the inking now and again i'm using a dip pen for this and, and one of the reasons or one of the advantages of a dip pen is that with pressure you can actually create um, a varied uh, thickness to the line that you that you draw uh, and they're quite scratchy then a lot of people don't like using them though they're very very scratchy um, it's a kind of a, a love it or hate it kind of thing really um, I, I, I used to use them a lot actually but um, I don't use them quite as much as I used to now um, although some pieces I do depending on what, what I'm actually uh, going for in the sort of the finished result or if I need that uh, varied line thickness so I'm going to start inking the piece now again I'm going to speed through some of it because it's going to take quite a while even though I'm trying to get that rough kind of feel and then we'll perhaps have a, a real time painting of the actual piece itself so I'm going to begin that now Okay, so I've inked the piece in now. Um, 
I've done it slightly differently. I've given the pages, uh, sorry, the books, um, some pages that you can't necessarily see in the original. Um, I've just done that to give you a little bit of texture, really, and just uh, sort of suggest that um, that those are books and pages because I've not spent an awful amount of time on them. Um, I've tried to keep Matilda herself relatively accurate, although it's I'm not quite not, not that happy with it really, but it's only for for fun, isn't it? Um, and uh, that's it really. So I'm going to allow that to dry. When it has dried, it takes longer than it would with a um, sort of a, a multi-liner uh, type pen with a, a dip pen. If I try and erase the uh, the pencil marks now, it's just going to make a mess and spread everywhere. So it needs five or ten minutes to dry, and um, and when that happens, well, I'll come back with the uh, video, and then we'll start colouring it in in a really basic style. Uh, again, just trying to mimic a little bit of what Quentin Blake does in in, in his own artwork. So we'll be back shortly. Right, it's time for the um, the painting now. Um, with this style of art, because it's kind of quite loose in nature, um, ideally you need quite a soft brush. So I've gone for a natural um, sable. Uh, actually, no, this is squirrel, uh, squirrel hair, I believe, with a few synthetic fibres in it as well. Um, so a soft brush. You can use synthetic um, or fully synthetic brushes. Uh, it's not a problem as such, but if you... I'll just zoom in. So you can see what I mean. Um, the natural fibers are quite soft and springy, so they're a little bit better when there's lots of water on the on the painting. With a synthetic brush, uh, they're just a little bit firmer. If you can see what I mean. You can still use them, but it just uh, won't generally work out quite as well. So I'm going to begin now. I'm not going to try and match all of the colours. I'll, I'll probably, you know, try and be relatively close with some. Um, but just to, yeah, just to get some colour on there and, and see how it goes, really. So I shall begin that now. In terms of the colours that I'm using, um, I'm often asked about sort of my mixing techniques and, and the colours and the paints that I use. When I mix my own colours, which I very often do, um, I don't even look at the names of the paint, in all honesty. I just throw it on the palette and keep fiddling with it until it's the colour that I want. I'm not very, very technical in that department, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just go with what feels right, really. I will do a video on it, because um, I have been asked to a few times, so I, I will do something on it at some point, but I'm probably not the best person to, to ask for that kind of thing, really, because I, I do just throw it down and see what happens. But I'll, uh, you'll, you'll see roughly what I mean on this, uh, on this painting here. So I'm just going to get a little bit of colour on the box first of all. And I think looking at Quentin's work, much of it, he would make the paper a lot wetter than what I'm doing here. And the reason I'm not, again, is because as I said earlier, I'm not actually using a water, uh, watercolor paper for this. This is just a cartridge paper, and um, you don't really want to make it that wet because it will start to crinkle very quickly. You can already see it starting to warp slightly when I'm doing this, but I'm not too bothered because I'm not going to. So I'm not going to make this overly wet. Really, just to get a bit of colour on there. And what I'll do in between, I'll, I'll let sections dry before I go back to it. And I'll build it up in layers rather than make it really wet in one go because all it'll do is damage the surface of the paper and um, I don't particularly want that on this uh, on this painting or many of them to be honest. You might notice since I cut the film I did add, I can't even remember what it was now, but just a couple of bits of extra detail on the image. Um, only because I, when I raised the graphite, I noticed that I hadn't quite completed a couple of the, the lines on the books, and uh, I think I adjusted Matilda's hair a little bit. But it's it's, it's only minimal, so you probably won't even notice it, to be honest. Mm. 
Now off of the camera at the moment, I'm just mixing a few colours for her top. And I'm just mixing about five random colours, don't even know the names of them, just blues and purples and that kind of thing, just trying to get something that resembles the top colour slightly. What I've got at the moment is, is not a complete match by any stretch, but it, it, will, it will do for this video. One thing that Quentin Blake does do, that I also do, and it's uh, these little bits that I, I, I purposely don't paint in, uh, just to give a, an illusion of light reflecting on the surface. And also with a very natural style, um, you don't um, necessarily pay too much attention to the edges. So that's another reason. I'm just gonna put a little bit of a little crimsony purple in that top and also there's a, a little bit of a dress on the original as you can see just there so I'm just going to pop that in there Nearly dip my pen in my drink instead of the water. I often do that. And now I'm going to start just colouring some of the books. Again, I'm, I'm not really going to worry too much about matching the colours on, on the original here. I'm just going to do what I think where I think. I'm not too bothered if the, the colours bleed into each other. I'm just going to let it do its own thing. That may or may not happen. And if you are watching this and you enjoy um, sort of art videos, I've started to do quite a lot um, of Facebook Live videos at the moment, just when the uh, the mood strikes. Um, so again, if you, if you are interested in this sort of thing, it might be worth you just checking out my Facebook page. It notifies you when I go on there live and I just do the occasional random bit of uh, painting or, or, or drawing. And um, I'm open to requests as well if you, is there anything in particular you'd like me to to draw on there and or uh, sort of do little mini lessons that kind of thing? Um, I was even thinking of doing a sort of questions and answers type thing at some point. I don't know if that'd be of interest because I'm often asked things, but it 
seems a little bit self-important if I were to do that, which isn't the case, but <laughs> I do often get emails and messages asking me various things, so I thought that might be of interest. So if it is, let me know in the, um, in the comments section below. And, uh, I'll do my best to accommodate that. I'll only be able to do it if, if there's enough interest, just because um, there's no point me doing a live video and having one, one question to, to build the whole thing around. But if, uh, if you'd be interested in that, let me know. Just gonna put a little bit of shadow on the pages of these books. And I don't know why I'm breaking one of my my usual rules on this painting, because I'm right-handed, I generally colour on the left-hand side of the paper first, so that when, I, um, when I'm when i working, I'm not constantly putting my wrist in, in the work that I've just done, but I seem to have uh, abandoned that rule on this occasion for some reason, so I don't usually paint this way around, but there we go. Now I'm just gonna go back to the area that I started with, which is the box on here. I just add a little bit more color to it and a little bit more depth. Again, I'm not really trying to color match the original. I'm just going to put a little bit of colour onto her face now. And I can certainly see that wasn't the colour that was used in the original. It's far too light, so as it's an important part of the painting, I'm just going to introduce another colour, a light pink in there as well. One thing Quentin Blake does always seem to do is give his characters very, sort of very large hands in comparison to the body. That's not quite the case here, but it's still a little bit oversized. Um, but I've noticed that with a lot of his uh, his characters. They have quite spiky fingers as well. Be interesting to hear if you grew up with um, <clears throat> books by Roald Dahl or 
just other books by Quentin Blake. Be interesting to see what your your favourites were as a as a child at the uh, in the comments below as well if you can uh, if you fancy doing that. Now in the original, you can't see the colour of the the, uh, the the book cover. Um, I think on mine, I'm going to make that a dark, sort of ready brown, just to make it stand out a little bit. Zoom in slightly. I'm just going to go in now and put a little bit more shading in certain areas. And I'm just using a muddy kind of grey brown for this. Some of this isn't necessarily in the original. Again, I'm just uh, adding a few of my own elements to the uh, to the picture. I'm not going to add too much of it, to be honest. On the original, there is a background colour very very similar to the to the uh, the wooden crate there. So I'm going to do something with that. I'm just mixing. Some yellows with some light browns, just to come up with something that's going to be slightly different to the colour of the crate, but not drastically so. Hopefully that will do. I'm just going to drop some, some water in the background first, just make the paper slightly wetter. Really do that very easily with this painting because uh, again, I'm not using the, uh, the correct paper really. Lastly, I'm just going to drop in a little bit more shadow, just here and there. Not being overly picky where it goes, really. I normally would be, but. And there we go. 
think that'll do for um, for this one. So it's loosely based once again on that style there, and uh, it's just my own own version of. And um, I hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to check my Facebook page out because I'm doing lots of live videos rather than YouTube ones at the moment because uh, people seem to uh, interact with those a little bit more. Um, but if you keep liking and subscribing and commenting, then I'll continue to add these videos on here. Uh, this one today was just for the uh, Roll Doll um, day that we've got going on. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, um, Everything is in the description if you need to uh, visit any of my links or anything like that. And I hope to see you again soon.